don't fuck with hoovers. If you wanna match us, you better roll two up. I kick my fucking shoes up when, when I, I enter the medical, medical center. center. You know the rules, bro. Paper planes only. Flying up in the air with be in my cronies. First class getting munchies and eating turkey bologna. If a nigga roll a duck in the room, we Welcome one, welcome all to the man cave. Appreciate y'all being here with us. Happy Memorial Day to all my people who served in the military. We appreciate you guys. All right, first of all, I want to start by thanking you, the person that may be looking at us right now, the person that be, may be looking at the YouTube channel. I want to thank you first and foremost. The Man Cave is celebrating today. We have made it to our first official 100 subscribers on our YouTube page. Woo -woo! And we have you guys to thank. Thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, first thing I want to say is if any of you guys want to watch the show, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe our YouTube channel. That's going to be The Man Cave, D-A-M-A-N-C-A-V-E, The Man Cave, uh, at YouTube. You can search it. You'll see a lot of our shows. Also, you guys can find any of our shows on Vimeo under uh, Kenny Woodfolk. So you guys want to uh, look that up, too. If you have Vimeo installed... And you guys want to uh, catch us live on Vimeo, it's going to be at Kenny Woodfolk, which is going to be uh, K-E-N-N-Y-W-O-O-D-F-O-L-K. All right. Uh, today's show, we're going to be talking a lot about the females, the women out there. Um, I urge you ladies to please call in and give us your perspective, either, you know, to applaud what we're saying or maybe to uh, shut us up and, and, and give us your own uh, point of view in it. Uh, if you want to call, you can call us at 203-802-KMWI. And of course, you guys know I'm not alone today. Y'all know I'm not alone. So the first person I want to bring out here, want to talk to my co-host extraordinaire, Mr. Uh, Counting himself. What's going on, Chef? <laughs> What's up, what's up, what's up, man? How you guys doing today, man? Man, we're awesome, bro. Yeah, we got the man cave in the, in the building. The original palace is here. You know what I'm saying? It That's feels right. good to have that energy just circulating in the room. And, you know what I'm saying? Detroit over there just looking good. You know what I'm saying? What's packing like here, my man? <laughs> what's going on, Detroit? <laughs> what up, though, everybody? You know what I'm saying? Happy Memorial Day. Yes, sir. Yeah, definitely coming from a Navy family. You know, definitely got to show love. All right, and and of course both of you guys, sir. But Joe, how you doing today, Joe? What's going up, people? Joe? How we doing? So both of you guys, sir. You got anything you want to say to your your fellow constituents today? Uh, I mean, just I appreciate their service, man. I mean, it's a hard job being away from your families and and doing the things that we obligate ourselves to do, man. But at the end of the day, you know, somebody's got to do it. And where did you serve at? Uh, I was in Virginia Beach, uh, Navy. No, you know what the Navy means, right? What? Never again volunteer yourself. Hey. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and you were a Marine, right? Yeah. And yeah. what war did you serve in? I was in OF-1. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. When we went to 2003, cool. when it first broke out, I was over there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, we had a bunch of interesting conversations this weekend. Over the weekend, we had a, a, wow. a really nice... Uh, uh, cookout man at Cisco's house. We thank you for that, Cisco. Also, want to celebrate Antoine having a baby. Antoine Mason, man, congratulations to you and your new daughter, Harmony, man. We, uh, you know, just want to show you a lot of love for that. So, before we get into the topic of the day, though, I want to come to Detroit and talk a little bit about some sports, man. How, man, what's going on in sports right now, man? Pretty much right now, you got the finals coming up Golden State and Toronto. Uh, pretty much, I made myself a little foolish picking Milwaukee over uh, <laughs> over Toronto, but this series is actually going to be a lot better than what most of y'all think. This is actually going six. I'm going Golden State in six. Why more than likely is going to end up staying in Toronto because it's going to see as an easier road to the finals in the East than going back west. Okay. Oh, so you got major prediction. Okay. Right. I've been I've been I've messed up twice. I, mean, <laughs> I, I picked Boston over Milwaukee. That flopped. I picked Milwaukee over Toronto. That flop. I'm pretty sure about this one. Oh. So what do you? What so do you, you have? You have no loyalties to Canada, then. But I thought you had like ties to Canada. No? Yeah, I mean, I got my. Because you're in Detroit, it's right yeah. there. I mean, that, I, I got my bachelor's in Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got my okay. bachelor's over there. I got family. You know, family that you know I pretty much came up in the game with over there and everything. Okay. But I mean, my leads have always been to. The so state, what's the so. difference with Toronto this year? What's the difference with with them this year? Kawhi. Yeah. DeMar DeRozan has been a choker all this time, and you can see that pretty much Toronto kept the same core together and just eliminated what pretty much one piece. Okay. And you see what De you see what DeRozan did for San Antonio when things got hot, he couldn't handle it. 
you think any of them have an opportunity to beat Golden State at all? No, nah, nobody beat Golden State. You can go ahead with that. So you you just already given them. You you ready to put your okay, check on it? You put money on it. That's what you want to know. How much money you got on it? <laughs> I'll be comfortable enough to put a, put a whole hundred on it. A whole hundred? All right. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. If I was a betting man, I'll put you up there. All right, so did you uh, check out Drake and his new airplane, man? He took himself a flight out to the Bahamas, man, this weekend on his new airplane. You guys hear about that? Yeah, they said 187 million on that joint. Man. The fact that that man got that type of brain, you know, definitely committed. Yeah, that thing cold. It's bigger than the 737. It's actually a model... 767-300F Boeing plane. Uh, it, it, it ranges from 185 million to over 200 million. Wow. And I mean, it's the absolute lap of luxury in that joint, man. I mean, it looked like a five-star hotel inside. I yeah, mean, I don't think he's going to use that plane particularly just for himself, though, right? I think he's going to kind of like use that plane to, you know, as like a charter plane for other celebrities and other people like that who want to fly yeah, here. It's, different it's, different like Air Air it's, it's called Air Drake. Yeah, that sounds pretty nice, though. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to you, brother, with that. Yeah, definitely, man. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this conversation, man, because I'm hoping that we're going to get some ladies to call in here and give us their rundown. Now, we had... Or we give them some calls. Yeah, we had, we had some, some really good topics, okay? And from what I gathered from the topics that we had this weekend, because I'm not going to talk about those topics, I want to take a different approach to it. Bro. What I gathered is that a lot of our, our black women, they feel like they're the most... Uh, disenfranchised sub race of people out here. They feel that they're unprotected. They feel that they're unprotected by society as well as us as men. And I want to ask you guys, coming from a male's perspective, because it's all of us today, how do we start to open up the dialogue to where we can, you know, kind of heal our women, the women in our society, the women in our community, so they don't feel like there's so much alone out here. I know it's pretty hard. Man, yeah, you know, it's honestly like you kind of you kind of see it in corporate America a lot. You know what I mean? Like, let's say if there is uh, when you're in corporate America, right, and there's an African American female that's going for a job, you don't understand the type of obstacles that she has to overcome when the majority of the, her coworkers are maybe non-African females, you know what I mean? Right. So there's always that stereotype, like that, that black girl stereotype when you go into those type of even Even with your name. Yeah, you know Sim- what I'm saying? Simply the oh, name. So you might have a crazy name when you're going into I like to apply those women that have climbed that corporate ladder and made a name for themselves in that type of situation too. But at the same time, it's kind of like, I think the most important thing we can do is just kind of just be there for them and just listen to them, and, you know what I mean? Not too much. Okay. All right. How about you, uh, Joe? What do you think? How do we uh, start to open up the dialogue, man? Well, I mean, from my perspective, I mean, it it really goes back to us understanding ourselves as men. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? In order for us to help them, we as men have to be in a different situation, different mindset, have a different perspective, and understand more about ourselves in order for us to, in essence, pull them along. You know, and that's that in itself is the struggle, right? Because so much, so much stuff has been, you know, through generations <coughs> bred into us, right, into our right, culture yeah. that we have to right. overcome, like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, today, right. You know? <laughs> yep, absolutely. You know, and, and you have to have a, a particular type of strength, man, to to one put yourself in a space so that way you can you can help somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So that in itself is is, is a struggle, man. You know, okay. but you know we try to find that balance point. You know, to, to try to to try to help them out as much as we can. You know, and just you know, praising them, bigging them up, whatever it is that we can do, man, you know, and it's just so many different yeah, you have to, obstacles and twists, you have man. To identify too, the you know need, right? Yeah, like, you know, so, all right, well, let's, to... let's, let's point out a couple needs. Yeah. Let's point out a couple. Okay, we, we got a lot, of, a lot of our black women that just don't feel, uh, they don't feel appreciated by us, plain and simple. That's a need, mm-hmm. you know, in order for them to feel protected, in order, order for us to do the right things by them, we have to start carrying ourselves a certain way. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how do we open up, like I said, once again, a dialogue on that? Because going back to what you were saying about uh, generational stuff that were bred into us as, as, as we, uh, you know, came, you know, evolved over the years. Right. Uh, we, were, we had a conversation where you were saying that uh, back in the day, it would take eight months to get some ass. 
excuse my language for saying it like that, but it, it, it took a man eight months to get his mask. Right. So game, man. When, when a man, I'm just saying, when a man was six and a half months in there, he was more apt to. Yeah, yeah, he gonna he gonna lock himself in, right. you know, For the rest of that term, you know. Right. So, but today, Go a ahead. man has he feels like he's got more options, right? So, right. if in essence, okay, I understand, you know, you have your standards and you, you want me to wait. Well, my options are I don't really have to wait. You know what I'm saying? Because I can, I can just get on my phone. I can swipe however. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Right, I don't right. do social media, but I can swipe, swipe, swipe all night until I find that one person that's choosing me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So instead of me investing eight months, I can invest 18 minutes, and I can find somebody that's with. You right. know what I'm saying? And, and, and that that changes the dynamic of our absolutely. relationships out absolutely. here. Absolutely. And that that's the first part we have to figure out is how do we protect our women from that on like is it just as simple as if you see a woman representing her, herself the wrong way do you just say something to her or we just keep accepting it because at the end of the day like you said uh i think earlier today we didn't change that that time left we didn't change that no you know what i'm saying we we didn't change that time the men didn't change the time left that it takes for you to get intimate with a woman we didn't change that women changed that so what do you mean exactly well like he said back in the day it would take you about eight months to get yeah. get that cookie right, right. It would, which, what he was saying it would take you about eight months to get that cookie it would take you to court a woman that is a woman's decision to, to make you court her in that way right. Right. you know but what I'm saying but you also have to look at remember you're talking about the times where that father was in the home right so the father was pretty much that buffer between you know the activity of her daughter Versus you are absolutely you know, right, Wayne. So God like, damn, so absolutely right. Yeah, so, 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 so it's like, you know, even in current cultures, you know, you have some current cultures where they still do arranged marriages and things like that. So they make sure that their daughter is put in the best position possible. Right. Thanks to the feminist movement yep. and other things that the government has done to eliminate us as fathers from the home. In the now home, you right. have a lot of these girls that are growing up without a positive male in their life, without positive male imagery. And also them thinking that, hey, anybody with $30 in their pocket is worth the investment. Man, I fucking knew you was good for a good point. <laughs> I knew you was good. It's been about a month and a half. I knew you was due for one <laughs> goddamn good, good point, out. man. Shh. We got to start protecting our daughters. That's going to be our number one. Yeah. So we're going to write that one down. I'm going to write that one down. Protect our daughters. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the number one thing that we need to do as men to change the narrative and start to protect our women all right so now let's talk about the workplace yeah all right so we go into the workplace our women are not feeling protected in the workplace they're not feeling like i mean not only are they being sexually harassed on a on a on a normal basis you know what i'm saying on a regular basis they, they've been looked at in as, as well as like you know if you got a boss mm -hmm. you know you got a female it's like it's almost it's a it's a different kind of yeah, you have to know how to adjust. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like at, For a woman. For a woman, she has to adjust like maybe two or three times more than a man has to. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, you for a black woman, they, they have to also overcome the obstacle like of how people just really look at them coming into the workplace. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like there is that, like it's unspoken, but you just know it's there. Like there's- So that, our like, clothes, her, her. how about clothes? The way oh, you the dress. Way, the way you dress, the way you talk. Yeah. Even how they wear their hair. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 an obstacle, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because for for us looking at them, like we're, we're fine with it. We're part, those are our queens, yeah, right? Yeah. But in, in a corporate America, in a workplace, it's like they have this hurdle or this, this obstacle they, ha they have to overcome as far as their image mm -hmm. and how other people see them. And them putting, trying to shine the best light on themselves in order for them to put themselves in a position to even get that position or be considered for that position. So how do I do that? Do I have to make myself look like, right? You know, change the tone. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, like, do I have to right, rectify yeah. myself in order for me to be even looked at as a, you know, a, a professional? You know, right. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, but at the same time, you know, how can we as men protect? when we're not in those environments. If you look at the average corporate environment, yes, it's predominantly Becky, predominantly right. white men, predominantly sisters. Well, see, they I got my list here. Out. They pushed us out a long time ago. You're right, I got my list here. Design. 
I got my list here, and as you can see, I got one slot for men and I got one slot for women, and I'm putting dress under something that they need to, uh, yeah. you know, no, to. What, no, what needs to happen is that more of us need to get back into corporate America. I'm one of the guys who left corporate America because I just honestly don't like playing that game. Mm. I enjoy what I do now, driving versus sitting in that office, dealing with people I really don't like dealing with, having the fake smile, having to act like I really care whether you're breathing or not. <laughs> you have some people, it's just, this shit is just, right. just the guy the I don't like playing that corporate game. That's the reason why I love corporate life. But the thing is, in order for us to protect our women in that environment, more of us have to get into corporate. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna challenge y'all then. We're talking about protecting our women. You down for protecting our women, right, Shit? Obviously, man. How about you, Joe? You down for protecting our women? Absolutely. How about you, Wayne? You down for protecting know. our women? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk I'm about something. Right. Yeah, let's talk about something that's real sensitive to black America. All right. okay. Strip clubs. Ooh, the strip club culture, man. Now, how do we, how do we, how do we draw the line between respect and what we're looking at? That's a good one, man. That's, well, I mean, that's well, you're right. They're two totally different things. It, it, it's, of course, we respect the dancers. Yeah. But do we respect what they're doing? And does that does that translate into Black America as some a reason why they aren't being protected the way they want because you know of stuff like that? I mean, the twerking, the city girls, the 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 freaking you know uh, uh, Atlanta housewives and the wine and the crying and the buy me this and the buy me that. I mean, is this the reason why a lot of black men has just fell back and said, you know, something y'all can protect yourself? I, I don't know. I mean, I I I frequent. I know. My That's why I'm asking. Club, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, but to, fine. You know, I mean, but honestly, it, it just it depends on the individual that's that's in that position, right? Right. So if if you want to be held to a certain standard, I use that term loosely. You know, we talking about the strip club, but conduct yourself as a professional. You know right. what I'm saying? I so if, if if this is where you come in to make your money, then just let it be about that. You know what I'm saying? So. All of the, the extra stuff that that may go on or may not go on, don't don't indulge in it. I mean, everybody's got a lane, right? Right? You know what right, I'm saying? right? Everybody's right, got a lane that they're going to fit into. Uh, by all means, you know no no so, shot on strip club or women that's working in strip clubs that's trying to get themselves out of that, that's trying to invest that money. Hey, look, if I had a place that I could go and make two three hundred in a night to shake my little behind, I'd be there ASAP. I'm just being honest, yeah. but you know. Also, we have to look at it from a point of view is that, you know, they're, they're saying to us, we don't feel protected. So the question is, why? What are we doing? Where's the disconnect between us not protecting them, them feeling like they're not protected? What's the disconnect? That's what I'm trying to find. I mean, if you're out in the strip club and you're doing this, that, and that, you can't get mad if a dude's smacking you in your ass. You can get mad, but, you know, it's almost a point. Like, you know, you putting a, it out there I like that, I just seen though. a neck roll. That's all I'm telling you. I just seen a neck uh, roll. Like, but, no, you, you, but, you have to understand it's all in context, though, right? So if you if, if, if you want to slap some ass, then it's going to be some money associated with that, right? If, I, yeah. if she's in there with her ass hanging out, you don't get no free slaps. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because she's in there to make her money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't don't just be handing out free ass slaps. You know what I'm saying? And don't don't get mad when she turn around. Look, 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 don't get mad when she turn around and be like, hey. I know we find out. Ten dollars, twenty dollars. That's gonna cost you. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. I, so that's I understand. I understand. And I mean, and, and then piggyback what Joe was saying. You have your professional strip clubs. You have your. Traps. Oh, back to his mama. <laughs> yeah, so it's like when you go to the more professional ones, you know, the ladies carry themselves in a different manner. They're professional, they're classy. They understand that they're dealing with men who have a nice sum of money. Some of these strip clubs you go to, you can tell that this is some chick straight out of South Dallas that just graduated from South. And this is what she got to do to help her mama. Man. Man. But look, look how it like, is what it is. Look how so, so, the <laughs> thing is, so the thing is, is the caliber of places that you're playing at versus you know, the opposite per se. Now the thing is, once again, the more professional joints, we don't tend to frequent. But look how strip clubs just like influence culture though. Like, right, that's what, what I'm mean? talking like, about more than anything. They, there's, there's, there's pole dancing classes now that You're right. originated from 
strippers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, the, uh, and it's actually they're taking it and saying, "Hey, this is a good workout." It is though. You know what I'm saying? But me, my yeah. fellas over there looking like, let me just find how many ones I got in my pocket. Shouts out to Latoya. I'll be seeing you doing your pole classes. You know, yeah, but it's, it's not that. just that. But <laughs> when you when it's taken, like, let's say there's something that started from the streets and it's taken somewhere else, right? Like, we can just look at the strip clubs like as in context, like it's the streets and it's just taking mainstream, right? But it's to the point now where I seen a video the other day, like how far out of hand has it gotten when there's little kids that are out there twerking and right, doing things. And right, to me, it's right. like there's where where should that limit be placed on if that's what the mom is doing? So is it okay for the child to to do that? And with the access of the internet, is it okay for the mom or a parent or cousin to film that? So, so I got a, I got another challenge for y'all. Then we 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 touched on the strip club, we touched on work, we touched on protection of women. So this is my next uh, question for you because we're trying to we're trying to open the dialogue. Just open it. We're not saying that we have all the answers. We're actually looking to you guys for some of the answers and some of the questions that we need to be answering. So my my questions to you guys are open ended. You know, what okay. I'm saying anything you have to say or put into it is going to be valuable. Now my question is in relationships. A lot of the women that don't feel protected, a lot of the women that that feel as though they're the disenfranchised ones are usually the wives, the girlfriends, and the uh, significant others of men just like me and you. My question to you is how do we start that dialogue? How do we open up that place where we can just start to heal these women in the right way? A lot of these women have a lot of psychological issues with trust and you know for us what do we do to to end that I mean, this was a great steve harvey quote and i very rarely ever quote it it was a lady on this show and she had her 16 year old son and she was asking steve how can she help her son grow to be a man mm-hmm. and he asked her have you ever seen an alien you know the audience laughing and everything she was like yeah i've seen them in movies and everything but he's like if i brought a real alien out to you right now would you know that i was an alien and she was like no what happens in our community a lot is that you have mama boyfriend, you have, you know, uncle that's just, you know, out here playing the game or whatever. Oh, okay. but, uh, now. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Are y'all having fun? Yeah, you're on you're on right now. What's your question? Uh Have we talked about what now? <laughs> okay, thank you. But to, but, but, but to go back, I set that up wrong. Hold on, let me try. <laughs> you said, but, to, but to go back to the Steve Harvey analogy, a lot of our women are growing up in these homes and they don't see positive male influence, positive male imagery. You know, I mean, unfortunately, in our community, a lot of times the dope boy cousin or the dope boy uncle or the uncle that's a player, he's glorified within the community. So You're right. She, so when she finally commits to a man, she's committing to that man who's not, you know, sullied to her. Right. She's committing to the man that every other chick wants. But right. unfortunately, when you commit to that type of man, guess what he's doing? Like Joe said earlier, okay, you tripping tonight, cool. I'm finna hit one of these other ones. So do you think it's important for men to pursue women or you you think you feel like it's important that it's a mutual thing has between be, men and women? Has to be mutual. Because there's nothing more frustrating as a man for me to pursue a woman just to find out that she wasn't even interested. Yep. Yeah. I agree with that. Like total, like I agree with that. Man. I agree with that one hundred percent. How about you, Joe? You got something to say about that? Uh Iceberg Slim, man. You know, women do the choosing for real. Right. You know, so you have you have to understand that, man. No matter how much we court a woman, no matter how much we try to impress, influence upon them, at the end of the day, they choose. Right. You know what I'm saying? That is so, very true, man. It I is. Mean, like, cause very true. You can actually be an honorable and upstanding man and get women just choose. ran the hell over by uh, some dude, like he's just looking at him like, yo, does he even know where his next dollar is coming from? But and a lot of the times that's why men start to play the game, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because now I'm gonna present as well as I can for me to try to get chosen. Mm-hmm. You know, when that may not, that may not be him at yeah. the end of the day, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm, I'm gonna put on these airs, I'm put on these fronts, this this facade, yeah. because right. I, I wanna be chosen, right? And this, and this is like, you playing the game and it, and it might be like, 
the dude just might be faking the whole thing the whole time. Like you might right. be sincere and your your actions right. might be genuine. But how are like how do women actually choose the type of partner or the, the type of partner that they want to be with? Are they just going by the type of shoes that the man has? Right. You know what I'm saying? Are you really looking at the type of character, like how he treats other people, how he treats his family? Right, and that kind of ties into what Wayne was saying. Yeah. You know, if they, if they don't have that example to base that judgment yeah. off of, mm-hmm. then you know their depiction or their I- yeah. idea is going to be kind of skewed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, true, 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 true. KMWR Media. You on with the man cave. You on live. What's up? Hey. Okay, so uh, the Twitter made a point earlier, which I thought was like so on key about men and being in the household for the daughter. And then you just posed the question about like healing women in relationships. So I just wanted to know, what do you guys think in terms of how that also has the fathers and, you know, fatherless men and sons and boys not having their fathers in their life to teach them how to be kings and master themselves and just be. Okay, that's a great question. We'll go ahead and answer it. Thank you for the call. Bye. <laughs> okay, that that is a good question, a good though. Question. I good think question. part of for part of what. Yeah, that was Brittany. Call. Brittany, 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 Brittany
but you could be sending them a different message. Mm-hmm. And, and kids pick up on that easily. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. kids, kids are, are, are very manipulative in that in that that aspect, and they will absolutely take the path of least resistance. So, in order for the ultimate plan to work, the man and the woman have to be on the same page, man. When it comes to you know rearing children, you know what kids will put parents against each other now. Oh yeah, they have to, they'll, they'll put you against each other. You know what I'm saying? So we just we just all around we just have to be smarter all around. You know what I'm saying? We have to be smarter all the way around. I wanted to ask another question to you, Cisco, because I know you uh, you just like myself, we were you know challenged in in having to be fathers to you know a child that may not be ours our own you know um and in protecting a woman from her own self mm. so to speak um when coming from another relationship into one with you what would you say are some of the key factors that w- allowed you to grow into a better place with your mate after you know something like that well i mean i was blessed to find a person who she's well grounded right she's unlike anybody that i've met before you know she's not into makeup and got to get my hair and nails done right. none of that stuff everything is about our kids mm-hmm. and i mean I, I saw the way that she was towards her children yeah and that showed me the type of person that she could potentially be towards me you know mm-hmm. even you know her children's father you know he was locked away for some time you know she still was taking the kids up there visiting with them and this is someone that she's not even with anymore Right. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, That's that, respect. That shows you the type of fire that this person comes from. Just so you know, women, men look at that. Oh, yeah. Men look at how you treat your children. Oh, yeah. Men look at how you treat your mom and your dad. Those things matter, especially to me. I know you guys, those things matter. If you yelling at your kids and you cussing at them and you beating them and putting them to sleep because you want to smoke a blunt or something like that, we looking at that kind of stuff. So that's something else you might want to, you know, take watch of. But go ahead, go ahead, finish your thought. Yeah, but um, yeah, just really, you know, before I even was able to come into her home, you know, it was, it was months. Right, you right. Know, she was not going to have any type of guy coming around with her children, you know. So eventually, after a few months, when I got an opportunity to meet with them, you know, everything I did was scrutinized. The way I spoke, if I used cuss words, anything like that. So that helped me. Cause I got a potty now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, so just just the way I carry myself when I'm around the kids yeah. has changed quite a bit. Okay. Okay. Better. Okay. Well, I how do we break these generational curses that we have as men, as far as women, because we got a lot of them. Like I'll tell you, you know, uh, as for growing up, um, I had a, a a father that raised me. He wasn't my, that was my stepdad, but he's like my father, he raised me, but he was a white man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not that that matters or anything like that, but you know, I kind of, I think some of the things that I learned from my dad a little later on in life when I got older and he actually came into my life, you know what I'm saying, were things that I could have learned a little earlier. Mm-hmm. So breaking those generational curses coming from uh, being fathers ourselves, growing up in homes without them, mm-hmm. to now being fathers ourselves, you know, what are some of the things you guys are doing differently? Well, it makes you want to stay, because uh, you know how that emptiness feeling, the emptiness feels, right? right. Like, uh, for instance, for myself, like I knew, I know who my dad is, but I've only seen him like five times. You right. see what I'm saying? On five occasions. You see what I'm saying? So for me, there's always a question mark that's been there. But once I feel like it's time for me to go answer that question. I'm like, no, I'm good. You can just stay where you're at. You know what I'm saying? So I choose not to have a, a relationship with my father. But do you think that that's hurting you as a man, though? I think it actually helped me. You know what I'm saying? Because the influence that he probably would have brought into my life was probably far more, more negative than I would have been able to experience from. I probably would have developed some of his bad habits that didn't coincide yeah, with Yeah, I mean, as far as, as far as him raising you, I can understand mm-hmm. that argument. But as far as you being a grown man at this point, yeah. you know, don't you think that, that that's, a, that's a part of your life you need to heal? Well, to you know, move I, I've already did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, didn't, when I, I went to go have a conversation with him when I was 30. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I turned 30. I was like, I was just going through this freaking midlife crisis at an early age. That's why all these gray hairs come around. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, I, I took a plane. I told him, like, listen, man, you need to have a conversation because for years, I thought he was dead. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like for me to find out that you're still alive. And I'm like, yo, I've been through all this shit. 
and you wasn't there to give not one single word of advice, man, you need to have a conversation. You know what I'm saying? We need to sit down man to man and have a conversation. But when the opportunity came to him, he wanted to sit back and say, well, your mom did this, your mom did that. I'm like, listen, we're both men here. You know what I'm saying? And I understand that men and women, they have their disagreements. But what about the children? You just left me on brother just to survive in the world on our own. You know what I'm saying? So I had to teach myself how to do everything. Right. But it got to a certain point where we can have this conversation now. So if you want to have a relationship with me, you know what I'm saying? That's fine. But in terms of me calling you dad or you being a father in my life, that's almost, it's done. I don't need you to do those things anymore. But if you want to be a friend and you can kind of work into those roles, I'm going to leave the opportunity up to you. That's dope and you know sad what I'm at the same yeah, time. But he you know chose, what I'm saying? I mean, but, to, but what do you do yeah. when your, your dad, your father, that person doesn't have those skills? Yeah, right? it doesn't. Right. They, they right. don't have the skill set to hand to you to make you a better person. But that's also what we got to break. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Is not having that skill set. That's what we need to so, break. So where do, where do we find that? Because for me, I'm 42. My parents have been together going on 44 years. Mm -hmm. You know, so my dad, in a sense, has always been there. Mm -hmm. Right. But the majority of the, the things that I learned, I learned from my mom. You know what I'm saying? My dad, he was he was he was the provider, right? right. He went he went to work every day. You know? Yeah. yeah. You know he, he leave before the sun is up, and then when the sun going down, that's when he pulling in the driveway. Yeah. And I done already took my bath, and I'm getting in the bed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I think that's what the lady last week was talking about about mental health. Uh, when we had that show, I'm not sure if you guys watched it, um, but when we had the mental health show, the lady was talking about that where you know a lot nowadays a lot more men are coming into the picture of their children's lives you have to yeah. you know in our day it was a little more scarcity when it came well, we had to a, we fathers had a, we had a lot of adversity that i mean that we had yeah they had the dope game the, the dope crack game, game the 80s, a lot of stuff yeah, a lot of families you know right and then uh it was what the clean crime bill killed our kids oh yeah the yeah, clean crime bill yeah got 20 years for three rocks yeah <laughs> but it actually started before that though you know what i'm saying um it started, you talking about years of slavery, you know what I'm saying? It actually started way before that. But even when the healing started again, you know what I'm saying? It actually, like, now we have to sit back and look at how, what are we doing? What are the kids doing now? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are the generation that's coming underneath us? What are they doing now? Like, how are these young men coming up now? Because they're the ones that are going to be shaping uh, the outcome of the next generation. You see what I'm saying? Right. And a lot of stuff that I'm seeing, I'm not really like, ah. Uh, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, but is it our fault? Like, did we do less than what we were supposed to do, or did we only do what we were taught? Well, I mean, to me, I think we're doing fine. I think we're coming along well. But mm -hmm. that's also why we have to have conversations like this yeah. as men. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I, I, I appreciate about being around you guys, you know, is that we don't shy away from conversations like this. Absolutely not. Um, last week as well, uh, I'm not, I'm, and I wanted to ask you guys, have you been keeping up with the show and how did you like them, your thoughts and comments on them? But last week as well, uh, Stan came in here and, and he was talking about, uh, and matter of fact, they're coming back next week too, so make sure y'all check that out. But uh, they were talking about uh, 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 goals and accountability mm -hmm. between brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, we have women who, you know, women do a great job fellowshipping with each other and us not so much. Our group, I don't believe is that no, that I way. Don't think so. no, I but think I'm just that. saying men in general, you know what I'm saying? Like those are some of the uh, generational curses that we're trying to break. Mm -hmm. And it starts with stuff like this, this show and this conversation so right now on the list for men we have we need to protect our daughters that's going to be the number one thing we can do to start protecting women to change the you know the the dialogue of what's going on because i just don't want women running around saying we're the least protected people black women no one cares about us no one you know a lot of them are saying this so i wanted to address the situation so the first thing we need to do is protect our daughters that's going to make sure that's going to make the next generation that'll be sitting in front of a camera like this doing the show that they're a little bit different than ours secondly we need to lead by example as men i think we all agreed on that that we need to lead by example by the way we uh uh we uh, address our women especially in front of our children the way we address our women in front in front of ourselves because that that's the most important thing you're gonna you know the most important battle you're gonna face in life is the battle against yourself mm -hmm. uh being good fathers uh that that just goes hand in hand with it if you're a good father 
your good father to your kids most likely it's going to uh, translate in the respect for your women. Uh, for, so that's all I got for the men so far. But yeah, but there's, there's, there's still going to be that, like, uh, like just thinking about what Joe was hitting on earlier, like how his dad was, like, the, the main provider of the house. You know what I'm saying? My mom, she eventually remarried, and, you know what I'm saying, and got other siblings from that as well. But I was in the same situation where my stepdad, he would work from morning to night. But it came a point in time where I'm that age now, you know what I'm saying? I'm smelling myself, you know what I mean? And it's like, yo, we need to start having conversations. But there's things like that can be done in terms of like that one-on-one, -on -one, uh, that son, father and son time is required. Well, what about a young boy? I got a 14-year-old. Y'all know my kid. Yes. He's a 16-year-old. What about young boys? Uh, so starting out now, young man, like, he's a young man, young, young yeah, man, yeah, right, boy, right. Yeah. You know, he's, he's still he's my baby, himself, but, he's a man. yeah, but you know, grown, raising a child like him, mm -hmm. you know, he's popular. He's a, he's a handsome young boy. So, you know, I mean, he, the girls are there. Yeah. The girls are there. And I took it upon myself to be open about sex with him. Mm -hmm. open about I wanted him to not ever be in a situation where he would feel like he couldn't come talk to me right you know what I'm saying so I'm completely open with him mm -hmm. to the fact that I've even went to the store and bought him condoms and bought it for him you know what I'm saying because I, I think it's important <laughs> that he knows yeah. what it is I've showed him my child support documents it's 19,000 <laughs> pages long and I'm like look this is what's going to happen to you I, th I made it rain with them joints I threw them up I threw a hundred thousand dollars in in payments up in the air and let them fall on them like we're going to make it rain in the club this yeah. is what you're doing if you're going out there and doing it but what do we do like how do we stop those young men from becoming, uh, what is the word? From becoming, for a woman it would be a Jezebel, but for a man, what would it, what would it be? I don't know, over sexualized. A what? What you say? A uh, yeah. yeah. What do we stop the ki to stop them from turning into just just uh, mongers? What is it? Sex mongers, oh, whore mongers. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> man whores, whore mongers. <laughs> How do we stop our young men from growing up like that? How do we get them to get to 20 and 21 instead of being hot in the pants? They're, they're looking at it a different I mean, way. It's, it's part of what you did by showing him, okay, this is the result of when you're not responsible with it, your dick. Secondly, having that positive imagery in his life. Like, me, I grew up around factory workers, hustlers, dope dicks. But the person I admired the most was my cousin Dexter, even when I saw him go off to college. Like, I used to watch a different world thinking like, yeah, that's TV, that shit don't really happen. But I physically saw him leave Detroit and go off to college and he don't want to leave. Damn, I can do that. Right. So, it's just a combination of things that have to be done in order to get a kid to that place. Something different when you're like 14, 15 year old. Right. Like, I mean, they hot in the pants, bro. You already started that thing already yeah. happening there. Like, so you need to get but, that one bus. Yeah, it's just going to happen, man. You know what I'm saying? That's like in the inevitable. But you just have to uh, preach safe sex. You know what I mean? Like, just be, no matter how bad the chick is, if she ain't your wife, you shouldn't be taking that thing off of nothing. You right. know what I mean? So you just. I mean, we're talking about 14, 15, 16 year old. We got a lot of moms out there who have little boys who are, you know, teens, mm -hmm. 16, 17, 15, 14. That's already an embarrassing conversation to have to have with your son oh as a woman. Yeah. You know, my mom had it with me, and I remember I wanted to <laughs> jump out the window of the car. Oh, like, no. oh my God, mom, like, stop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's an uncomfortable oh, conversation. Yeah. It's a little easier for us as men to have it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, yeah. but how do we like like what do you, what do you think like if you had to pick two things yourself that you could tell a young man to try to shape him to make him not make the mistakes that we make as far as you know going out to the club and just looking at any and everything that's jumping around with breast and an ass yeah. like it's an object yeah instead of that's a woman that's a human being that's a beautiful yeah. woman and how do what do we do? I mean, it's, it's just, to, just to echo your point, depending on what state you're in, if the child is under 18, the parents are on the hook for that child support. Yeah, you're right. You're right, kid. yeah. And I choke his ass out. It'll be a problem. It'll be the man cave going to jail on this <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> it wouldn't be a game. Can, can I jump in on this real quick? Oh. Yeah, go ahead, Kenny. Go ahead. So, I mean, I think it's a great conversation. I think that the question that you're asking is how do we get these young men to not be 
you know, like the whoremongers, like chauvinist, yeah. What we need to do is teach kids a different value system. Mm-hmm. We have to value, respect people, authority, women, all of it, the whole nine. So I think it starts with how we teach them values. And yourself, which has got to be the, yeah, that has to be the main value is the value yourself. Like I tell him all the time, like that, that thing in your pants is a tool, it's an apparatus, but it's yours and you have to value yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? You have to value, because I, I think it's a lot of guys walking around that don't value their own self, their own body, don't love themselves. You know what I'm saying? I was guilty of being one of them at, at one point, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, struggle is so much different than ours though, man, with the influence of social media. Right. Man, always being right. connected right. to all, right. just inundated with Snapchat. You know, all of this information, yeah. man, that they can't, you know, they're not, they don't have the tools to process that stuff the way that they should early, at such an early age, early man. Enough. But they're, they're, it's, it's injected into How them. How do man. we help them? Nah, this, you, hey, man, you're this, going against a, a whole entire system. Like, think about it. When you was like... But it's the, it's the value system. It's yeah. like I said, it's the yeah. value system, right? So in this house, you know what? You don't get a phone when you're nine years old. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I and I, I control the Wi-Fi. So, you know, at a certain time, the Wi-Fi goes off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that way, when you're not sitting on the couch with your iPad... And you go in your room, I know you're not looking up some crazy stuff or I got some stalker on the other end of the line that's, you know what I'm saying, trying to yes. reach out to my daughter or some shit uh, like yes. that. So, it's yeah. you, you know, it's, 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 it's the value system again, man. You know, and at the end of the day, you know, for me, I always think about like three things. You know, any anytime my kids are involved, right, I'm thinking about three things. I want them to be accountable. I want them to be responsible mm-hmm. and productive. Those are my goals for children. Right. Not just mine, but any child. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So if I can get them to accomplish those three things, I think I'm working with a little bit yeah. of success there. Right. I, you know I what I'm saying? And, and that stays in the back of my mind. You know what I'm saying? For me, and it's almost to a fault, I'm always looking for teachable moments. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm always looking for teachable moments to the point where right. I've gotten into arguments with their mom about right. these teachable moments because she's just like, hey, can we just get this? Is now is not the time? No, right. it is. Yeah, the I'm the same way. It's I'm always time way, yeah. to teach them. Yeah, they get mad at me. I be you know preaching. <laughs> like, oh, right. man, always you know preaching, but I can't. I, you get me started on somebody, and you can see by what I'm doing here with this podcast. You get me started on something, I be. If we be still going an hour and a half later. So my kids don't, you know. They don't hear the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> they already know. Well, how about you, Cisco, man? Come on, weigh in on the conversation. Know. What we you got? We're going through it right now. Nine and ten-year-olds, and, you know, they're on social media. And you try to curtail it as much as you can, but when all of their peers are also on all these different social outlets. It's hard, yeah. You know, they want to do the same thing. You know, they're, they're, now they're asking about Snapchat. Mom, how old do we have to be to get a Snapchat? I mean, there's it, just so much access out there for them. It, well, it's, it's tough for the kids. To it's right. tough on the parents as well. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. You have to know like what is the next thing that these kids are seeking after, and how can you monitor it? You right. know what I mean? Like, Absolutely. how can you like the kid on Snapchat? Like, how can you monitor Snapchat? Right. You know what I mean? These are the first by the phone. You can actually set the filters, set the settings to where certain things they can download, certain things they can't. Yeah. So you just set the phone from the beginning to where they can't access certain social media sites. Yeah. Okay. All right. We, so we got a we got a girl that uh, she grew up in our old neighborhood, and her father, a single father, raising a little girl. She used to come over to the house and hang out and stuff. She's on uh, Musically. She's friends with with Ajayda. and this little girl is making Musically in the bathtub with <laughs> bubbles with no clothes on. She's ten years old. Oh no, so that's too much. So, yeah, you know. yeah, that's crazy. That goes back to, to protecting our daughters as men, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. cause I'd be going crazy right there. I know my daughter, <laughs> my daughter's older, so thank God. But okay, so going back to going back to our women, because once again, this show is about trying to protect. I like, I just want to try to open up the dialogue. What what do we actually need to do? And I, I really wish I had a female to kind of, you know send some right, of right, mojo right. here right now to yeah. let me understand what they're saying because like from the, from what I get from the conversation that we had this weekend mm-hmm. was that a lot of women are just feeling they feel like it's just on them so here's another question I have in order to protect our women we can look at men we can say we're going to protect our w- women from men R. Kelly uh, 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 all of these other Woody Allen all of these guys doing all this immoral sexually stuff like that we can say in the workplace that we're going to take and we're going to protect our women from 
people who are lower rent wages. We can say we're not going to allow you to pay women lower for the same job. Mm -hmm. We can say we're not going to allow you to sexually harass women sideways and think you're going to get away with it. Mm -hmm. We can protect them from that. We can bring them home and we can protect them from us and ourselves by being better men and being accountable and actually having goals and accountability with our friends, right? What do we do? What are we going to do about sports? How do we protect women in sports from what's going on now? where we have men deciding I'm going to be transgender today and dominate and I'm going to go out here and I'm going to break a world record and dominate now my question to you guys is do we have a place in this conversation or should we just shut up I think we should shut up see and this is why I, I think we're wrong to do that now politically you're right we should shut up because uh, gay rights, transgender rights, and stuff like that are something that straight men get spit on for even having a, 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 a what am I looking for? Just a, a opinion on it. See, you the know? only way that you can really attack that type of subject, the only way, like, it don't matter, like, where you come from, the only way that you can attach, uh, attack that where you're going with this is from a spiritual element and you need to come with some biblical Quranic Yeah, but they're not going to respect that though. They, but that's the they're only way to respect gonna, that. Any other type of way you're going to get slammed. They're not going to nah, respect the that. The way it works is this. You had feminists, you had LGTB, they fought for these rights. They fought for them. So since they fought for them, if a boy want to put on the wig and say, you girl and go beat girls in the honey, guess what? That's what they fought for. I think that's so unfair, man. I think that's so unfair to females, man. Like, it's not going to be funny when the 4 by 100 women's relay team is all men. It's not going to be funny then. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's cool. But is, is, that, is that our fight? No, it's not. It's you know not. What I'm saying? But, so, but this is what, that's the question I'm asking, okay. though. Do we have a right to have an opinion on it as men or yeah, not? Yeah, of course. It's your, yeah, yeah, they have an opinion. You have an This is your daughter running against a horse. Right. The same token. This boy identifies as a girl, so who are we to tell him or her how they should live their life? KMWI Media, you on with the man cave. Can I help you? Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, repeat that one more time, Swell. <laughs> yes, repeat it one more time. What did you say? I wanted to applaud y'all on the topic that y'all are speaking on. Oh, thank you so much. We appreciate you. I said thank you very much. We appreciate you. Where are you calling from? Oh, okay, Midland, Texas. We appreciate your call. Thank you so hey, much. Midland. Thank you. Bye. That's cool. Yeah, man. it's always good to have somebody you know oh, recognize, yeah. and we appreciate that. Uh, I, I couldn't hear. The so question. where were we? I don't think it was one. She just well, she wanted just to come on the, on the show, yeah. okay. and that's cool, you know. But where, where but were you were we? asking, uh, should we have an opinion? Yeah, I mean everybody's entitled yeah. to their opinion, though. You know, it just seems like we get way. shot down when we have it, though. You know, did you hear about the rapper in I think it was Germany or something? He uh, he's a rapper local rapper across she's in the uk he he uh made himself a woman in the morning won the deadlift competition put the yeah, weights down <laughs> and walked off and said i'm now a man again <laughs> yeah. hey guess what you hey, hold on guess what on. ladies you fought for this Enjoy. Look, 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 look. Before we can even have a conversation about like the sports, you got to figure out which restroom they can use first. You know what I'm saying? Right, but see, you know, I'm like that's the same Like Fallon Fox, man. You know what Fallon Fox is? No. Okay, Fallon Fox is a UFC yes. fighter. Well, she's not in the UFC. The UFC refused to sign her. Good. But she's an MMA fighter. She's an MMA and fighter. And she's fought women and she's. And she have whooped they yeah. ass. <laughs> like, I'm talking about bust they face. I'm talking about orbital bone crushed. You know what I'm saying? And I, this is just not fair, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just not fair. I just don't believe in it. I just think. But the thing is this. When you fight for equality, understand it's a two-way fight. Just like, right, just, right. like just like women want to hoop in the NBA, 
Don't get mad when a dude want to hoop in the WNBA. Don't scream, oh, he's a man, he shouldn't be able to play with us. But yet, you want to play in the NBA and get them NBA checks as well. Did y'all so this ever is think? A fight you fought for. Enjoy the results. Did you think that we would ever be in a place where Joanna Man would actually be reality? Yeah. Joanna Man. Y'all remember that? Yeah. The movie from back in the day where the guy who got kicked out of the NBA and became a woman and went in the WNBA. Like, this is reality. Yeah. Can I comment again? Yes, sir. Okay, because this whole thing about gender specific is a new thing. There's a lot of challenges, a lot of things that has to be researched throughout time. Yes, it is not fair. Absolutely, it is not fair. I agree with you, Dave. Thank you. It is not fair. It shouldn't happen like this. You know, it has nothing to do with the people who choose or select yeah. or whatever they choose to do. That's fine. But when it comes to professional sports, there has to be a distinction between the two because right. we know that men and women are built differently. Genetic. So as far as competition is concerned, they need to be very specific and keep the way it is. Right, yeah. I mean, I, I get upset with it. You know, I understand transgenders want to be uh, – you know they want to be looked at as women, and I'm 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 cool, man. Be women whatever you want to be, whatever you want to be in life, you can be what you want to be. But right. as far as I'm concerned, if you don't have female gametes in your body, I you are not a female to me. And if you don't know what gametes are, go and look them up. Those are, those those are the cells that actually in your reproductive system that allow you to become pregnant or get pregnant. You have male gametes and you have female gametes and they don't work with each other. You know what I'm saying? They don't work with each other. So I, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to know if we, we deserve a, uh, 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 opinion on it because, uh, Ian, I think the guy's name is Ian Zeropoulos or something like that. One of those Facebook, Instagram guys, he's gay you know, pretty intelligent individual. And he said that the only, he was like the only time a male can have an honest opinion on the transgender movement or the gay movement is if they're a gay man. And I thought it, no, I thought it was an interesting, no, it's an interesting proposition because it's the only way women don't take offense to it. Mm -hmm. A feminist, when you're talking about a feminist movement, the only people that can't argue with them is somebody that ain't trying to get them. Put it that way. Yeah, but see, like, I don't have enough knowledge regarding, like, LBGQT or to make a comment about it. You know what I mean? Like, Those I, letters are all wrong. So. They're, they're the right letters. This is right, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. works. Okay. Yeah, I don't have enough knowledge of, regarding the movement. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. But the way I personally feel about it is, okay, man, we're about to get into right. it right now. <laughs> it's coming. Do you want to KMWI Media, you on with the Man Cave. Hello, guys. How you doing? Mm -hmm. And so, I don't particularly think, I mean, all women are different, but I don't necessarily feel like we're asking you to protect us from the rules. Like, you know, we have enough sense to know that the world is not perfect and we're going to be faced with, with obstacles. The protection and the peace comes more so from within the home and within the relationship. Okay. And feeling protected in that, in that sense um, should have been a lot since you say, you know, having a faith base and a peace of state of mind and all of that, it's, a lot of it is depending on that man to have those resources for it to be that home base and that safety net. Um, just like men expect us to be their peace, we expect them to be our protectors. Okay, well, let me ask you a question, Ms. Kim. Let me ask you a question real quick. I'd like to ask you two questions. Well, actually, not two questions. I want two answers from you, though. Name me two things that a man can do to help protect you the way you feel you need to be protected in today's society. He can not violate my trust and he can offer a state of protection to where I'm safe with him. You must first feel safe with him before you can feel that he can protect you. That's a good point. That's a good point. So the first, okay, well, thank you very much for your comment. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so the first thing she said is that in order for her to trust, that man has to instill a sort of peace in her. To, is that what she said? Or am I, I wrong? I can understand it. I'm, I can halfway here, but I, I think I get the gist of what she was saying. I mean, if she's saying that a man must instill peace in her, that means that that man must come into her life and show her right off the rip. Your worries initially, right. you can alleviate those. Yeah, you don't have to worry worries, about worries, understand I'm going to be able not only to address those, but handle those as well. Right. That sounds okay. like an expensive gamble for a man. 
Why you say that? Go ahead. Uh, it just sounds like, um, in terms of, like looking for, it sounds like she's maybe not just her, but if, if she's coming from a perspective where she's a single woman and she's looking for a man to come into her life and be that, that dude that's going to come in there, that's like a financial burden. Not a financial burden, but a financial responsibility because you have to show that you're able to take care of certain things in her eyes. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? And if you're going to be doing that, that means you're going to be spending money and things like, I don't know if that's coming to money or it's just coming to time. Well, you see what I'm saying? I don't, just I don't, I don't think it's a financial aspect because there's a lot of women out here that's caked up, man. You uh, know right. what I'm saying? There's a lot of women get they got their they got money. money. Just you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I think it's more or less the, 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 the emotional yeah. side of it. You know right, what I'm saying? right. It's more the emotional yeah, side. Yeah, because a lot of them are damaged. You're right. A, a lot of women yeah. come. We're all damaged. You, we're yeah. all are. You're yeah. right. So, but being at, being at the age we're at, you know, where we're 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 between that age of you know we know better and old as hell. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We between that age. So we've learned all of those things from the past. We we've we've accepted and we've been out there, we done party, we done we done ran through them, we done had this girl, that girl, that girl, that girl, we done dated four at a time, two at a time, three at a time. And we're all at that place where it's it's kinda like, all right, we're straight. You know, but still we have women that come from that same area we came at when we was doing all of that fuck shit as men mm -hmm. you know that they're damaged for that and then when we bring them into this new era of man that we get to when we reach about 35 36 yeah. well for me it was 30, 30, 40, you, you know somewhere around there 35 might have been late but we get to a new point as men in life and when we get to that point, how do we deal with protecting their emotions? Like, that's the whole show right there. They have to be ready. Plain and simple. Yeah. They I can be right. Do we I point can. the finger at them and say, hey, look, you got to get your mind right, Slim, because I can't do that. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's going to be expensive because you're going to be spending so much time and energy and money into stuff that's not going to be. But that's what I'm asking. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. It goes both ways because case in point. I can hand you a million dollars. If you're not financially responsible to handle a million dollars and you blow that million, that's not mine, his, or his fault. That's your fault. You can't handle that million dollars. So if a good man comes into a woman's <clears throat> life and she's not ready for him, that's nobody's fault but her own. Right. She has to grow into that, to that spot. I mean, you can be people who and then you're going to change her. See, I'm with Joe. I'm with, I'm with Joe, bro. I'm shaking my head on it because... I think it's a responsibility that when you decide to love a woman, you, like Bob Marley said it best, man, don't wake up a woman's love without the intention of loving her. Yeah, right. sure. You know what I'm saying? Right. And Bob, Bob Marley said it the best. Like these women don't come into our lives for us to love them and be you. No, we swindle them into it with all of the kisses and the nice Ooh, looks right, right, and right. the, the, the smell of good. We play the fucking game. game. All the nice dinners and all right. the tricking and everything. So once we love. get to the point, once we get to the point where, you know, we know that that woman's heart is opening up for us. Yeah, girl, I'm just playing with you. Do we have a duty? <laughs> do we have a duty as men to you had oh, you absolutely You had an obligation that. at right. that point in time. Yeah, you absolutely You know what I'm saying? You had an obligation because you wrote that check okay. and you better catch Because as y'all know, most of the time, I, I hardly ever... I, I hardly ever go at the women, right? Right. I'm always about checking us. Yeah. Right. 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 I'm always. Exactly. I'll give you. I'll give you that perspective, and then I always turn around and be like, "Hey, but well, this is what we need to do." Yeah. Fellas, hey, we need right. to do this. Right. Cisco, we need to do yeah. this. We yeah. need to do as because really that's the only person we can hold responsible is ourselves and all of this. Right. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So if if man being vulnerable. Right, we have to put ourselves yeah, in a state to be vulnerable yeah. to them, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, and that's the hardest thing for us to do, yeah. man, because yeah. of so so much stuff that we yeah. carry, yeah. you know, and so much stuff that they carry. It's hard for us to allow, you know, someone to stand there in your naked truth, right? Yeah. That's the hardest thing to do, man. And, and we, until we can get to a place where we can do that, like it's it's, it's going to forever be a struggle, man. And the sooner you can accomplish that. You know, now then the, the good work starts. You know, ahead, Cisco, what you got? What you got, Wayne? What you got, Cisco? You got something you want to say? Well, yeah, I mean, I was gonna leave it as a closing note. When the date, when it comes that a man being vulnerable is showing his weakness, then you will see more courage in conversation. That's how strong he is. Go ahead, Cisco. What you got? Yeah, first things first, you gotta make sure you're with the right person that you're willing to pour into and mm -hmm. invest your time. In. Yes, sir. If you, if you don't have no intentions of really having something with this person, 
Don't even waste your time. Don't play the game. I mean, you're too old to be playing games at this point. Like, right, yeah. exactly. So you go for the women, too. Right, go for the women, too. I'm not. I ain't hit 40 yet. <laughs> I hear you, man. Yo, it's always nice to have the fellas around, man. Yeah, Hell yeah. Hey, I appreciate you guys for coming out. I hope y'all like what we doing, man. Hey, please like, comment, and subscribe on the YouTube These pages. These conversations are nonstop, people. <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> hey, anything you guys can give us, any advice you can give us, please leave it on the YouTube page. We appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Like, That's comment, and time subscribe. Until the next time, baby. Keep calling in. Keep calling in. Keep calling in. Until you're about 37. Hey, 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 h